finally a day without rain. It feels like it's been raining for a month. I know it hasn't, but in Queensland we don't get that many wet days, especially in winter. And today it looked pretty good. I have just noticed there is some grey clouds over there, but I think they're going in the opposite direction, so, so we should be okay. Scotty. Oh, Scotty. A few months since the Z3 from ASTEC was released, before EastgateCon actually, uh, and I haven't really done any more content on it. I've been busy riding it and having an absolute blast on it and falling in love with it, but I haven't filmed anything because, well, as I said in my uh, Red Rock video, I've been taking a little bit of a break. Today feels like the right time. I've just cracked the 600 kilometer mark on that board. This really has become my, my daily rider when I'm not testing wheels or trying to get kilometers on something else or doing a, a first ride review on another board. The Z3 has become the one that I grab every single time. It's the one that's always just plugged in on charge, ready to go at a moment's notice. Over that 600 kilometers, I've fallen more in love with it. And I did say in my first review that it could potentially knock the NYX Z1 off the top board. Well, has it? I'm gonna explain in the video why it has and why it hasn't. And of course, just as a reminder at any time during this video, if you have any comments or questions uh, or answers to some of the questions, feel free to chuck them down below. If you do want to get an NYX or any Ace Deck board, um, like I have sort of started saying in the last few months, make sure you don't pay full price. Um, my discount code is Scott D. That gives you a nice little discount and it gives me a little kickback as well because it does cost money to to run this channel with cameras and subscriptions and music and all that sort of drama well hang around because i'm going to give you my range estimates because i've run this board flat many many times so i'm going to give you my range that i've achieved on this board over three different scenarios and so, i'm also going to tell you about some new products coming out very very soon Let's get started. The first thing I need to talk about is the tires. I've just put a brand new set on because I wore out the back ones very, very quickly. I rotated them, but I was just losing traction from those ball ones at the front. So I've put four brand new tires on. The reason I went through the tires in 600 kilometers is because I've got this horrible bad habit of slamming the brakes on. I love, I love locking up those back tires and, and having a little bit of a slide. I know I shouldn't, but that's just explaining why I've already been through a set of tires. Now I had a set of the, the Sunmates in the shed, so I put them on. I will probably put the inboards Novas on there, but I was feeling lazy. They were on another board. I couldn't be bothered taking them off and doing the whole swap and yeah, anyway. So these have got about, I don't know, 50K on them. They're nicely worn in. Uh, and yeah, that feels exactly like it did on day one. What? has changed with this board. Well, in my one, absolutely ooh, nothing. But from the factory, they have made some big upgrades already just between batch one and batch two. They received a bit of feedback about uh, tolerances or play in the trucks. And what I mean by that is this bit here, mine doesn't do it too bad because I've, I've tightened everything up, but there was a little bit of rattle coming from the front here. When there was no load, on the board so once you put load on that all gets taken up and there's there's no rattle when you're riding oh they also weren't happy with this they didn't get any feedback on it but this swing arm right here and truth be told i still need to replace mine i've got mine in a box at work but we've just moved um, they weren't happy with the the thickness of that piece and so they've remachined it 
and they've actually sent that out to every single person who bought um, a batch one board. From batch two, it's upgraded, but if you got a batch one, you would have or you should have received those upgraded swing arms in the post. Next thing to talk about, that's all you binding purists. I haven't put bindings on it yet. I, I actually need to. I've been speaking to the importer here in Australia for MBS. Uh, they're expecting their next shipment in about three weeks from the US. Everyone said go MBS, so that's what I'm doing. There are other options available right now, but according to the Brains Trust and everyone who commented on my first video, MBS is the way to go. So they're gonna be available in the next three weeks, so you will see a follow-up video with MBS bindings on the Z3. The other thing I wanna talk about that I really, I, I think I almost take for advantage sometimes with the Ace Deck boards and a couple others, but that's the gear drives. You know, you can come on the grass, you can come on a freshly mowed grass, all that sort of stuff, and it doesn't get all caught up inside your belts. I've got so many boards that are designed, that are designed for off-road, and as soon as you get on, on freshly cut grass or long grass, it all gets caught up in there, and then you have to stop and unpick it, otherwise it you know, stretches the belts, and just causes havoc. The gear drives on these things, especially their new elemental one because it's a lot smaller footprint so you get better ground clearance it's just it is such a pleasure to ride because you just have to think you don't have to think about it you get on a ride One thing I do want to talk about that annoys me to no end with this board, but I've learned to live with it. And if you've got an MYX and you've got a solution for this, please, please tell me, because I feel that everyone who owns an MYX has the same problem as me. These grub screws right here, the bushing, the bushing grub screws, is that a good angle? Can you see? Maybe not, let me go under here. These grub screws. I have lost so many, so many of these things. You have to remember, I have to stop every, I don't know, 50K and tighten them, and if I don't, they're gone. So I always have to carry, and this is dangerous. I should have a little pouch for this. It could stab me in my, in my kidney. I have to carry that tool with me at all times. And I now have a habit. When I stop for a coffee, I just check it. Most of the time it's okay, but occasionally it is finger loose. If you have an MYX, or if you've got a board with this style truck and you've got a solution, please tell me, I would love to know because it really is my only complaint with this board and it's just, it's just annoying. Hill climb is just it's just not even a question on this board. Good morning, how you doing? Can I get a uh, six ounce a long black please? A little bit of cold water. Thank you. All right, let's have a chat about range and what I've been achieving over the 600 kilometers I've put on this board so far. I have kept track. So I'm gonna take a moment and read from my phone, have a coffee and tell you exactly what I've achieved on this Z3, um, which is the, I'll tell you all the specs of the battery. Give me one second. Uh, right. Battery size, the, the one I've got is the 14S 5-piece, that's uh, 1295 watt hours, 25 amp hours. So it's got a really good size battery. It's the Samsung 50Es, 
um, and they perform well. Um, I experience, I would call it considerable sag when I get down to around two bars. So when I say considerable sag, I can still accelerate up to probably 40k an hour, but it's a little bit slower and it does lose a little bit of hill climbability. Well, a little bit, a lot, like 50%, but that's way, way at the bottom of the battery. Now, as far as range, I have kept track of these, so I knew it would be important. Uh, where are we? Right, so, like I said in the beginning, I've got like different um, achievements from different rides that I've done. Now, the first one, this was done over a number of days. I took the board away with me, with the family. Uh, so I rode this the whole time uh, my daughter was on her EUC and my wife was on the scooter. So this was slow riding, uh, and it was all over the Sunshine Coast, like... We did some kilometers. Uh, so I called this slow, and I'm gonna say it was between 15 to 20 kilometers per hour in E mode, so not in low mode, and I achieved 82 kilometers. Um, now give or take a kilometer or two because I was tracking it on my phone. I had to make sure I remembered to hit start every time. Uh, so it could have been a little bit more, could have been a couple less, but 82 is the figure I got through uh, Relive. The next one I'm calling medium. So this is a medium speed ride. This was between 20 to 34 kilometers per hour. This is like what I would call a standard group ride pace. Lots of stopping, starting. It was through the city, um, along uh, at Tanunda, and I got 55 kilometers. Again, this was in uh, this was in sports mode, so not sports plus, sport mode. And I wasn't doing full throttle, so I wasn't hitting the accelerator hard. I was cruising. I was just enjoying the day. Uh, I was with one other friend. Uh, right, next one I'm gonna call it in fast. So this was fast. It was in sports plus. It was a 50-50 mix of on-road and off-road, uh, and I got 44 kilometers. Um, and this was, you know, hard acceleration, up to top speed, as fast as I could, hard braking, that sort of thing. Stopping, starting, not many red lights. It was on a bike track uh, heading towards Sandgate. So 44 kilometers on that, which again, for that board, for my weight, I'm over 100 kilos. Thank you, Las Vegas. Um, very, very good achievement. And then the last one, the one I didn't mention at the intro, I completely forgot about, was the off-road. So I did a complete off-road session, like uh, dirt, shingle, that sort of thing. No, no loose sand, because that would really kill the range. A uh, little bit of grass. It was in Sports Plus. There was a lot of hills, like a lot of hills, and I got 32 kilometers. Right, uh, let's go for another ride. I've got a couple more things I want to share with you, then we'll end the video. I really want to make this not too, not super long. So let's talk about the workflow or the future of Ace Deck because the future is bright. They are, oh, I'm gonna stop, this is crazy. They are constantly innovating, uh, constantly looking for what the market wants, what's popular. You know, they learned so much from being at Eastgate Con, like so much. And there they premiered or they, they teased their next board, which is called the Z5. Well, they've codenamed it the Z5. And the good news is, this board is gonna be out before the end of the year. They are in mass production right now for all the parts. And this board is gonna be delivering something very new to the Eastgate scene. <clears throat> and I think it's gonna be very, very well received. Its official name is gonna be the Atlanta Falcons. But I probably can't say you that, so I'm gonna beep it out. But that's not all that's on their radar. They have something for everyone coming. What that is, I cannot say, unfortunately. I wish I could, and as soon as I can, I will tell you. But watch this space. If you've liked what they've done till now, but you've thought, ah, oh, there's nothing quite right for me. If you haven't seen your Goldilocks board, keep an eye on Ace Deck over the next six months, I would say. Oh, wow, look at this. This is just big grass spaces. I've never been here before. This looks like a bloody, this looks like a golf course almost. Watch the space, get back on topic. There is definitely something coming for you.
and with the standard ace deck well not the standard the expected ace deck uh, quality and innovation Goodness, is this even a path? Oh yeah, path's back again a little bit. Oh, oh almost come off. <laughs> Bit of a deliverance feel to it. Oh, here is the I don't know, it's called the Tingelfa model airplane club or something like that. Yeah. So, what else is there to say about the Z3? Well, not much. I did tease at the beginning if it had become my new favorite board, and it's a real tough one. I'm gonna try to answer it. I rode the I had the option, I had the choice to pick this or the N3 in Vegas, and I chose the N3 because I've been riding that board a fair bit. Uh, before I got to Vegas and I knew what to expect on that board. I knew how to handle it, I knew how to throw it around and it got even better once I got there and we put some riptide bushings in it. And that was gonna, well that did replace the NYXZ1 as my favorite board. I was gonna make that video. But then when I got back from Vegas, I forced myself to ride the Z3 as much as I possibly could as much as I could and within three weeks I really had fallen in love with this board because it is a do-all board I was wearing the tires at like I mentioned I'm on my second set of tires getting the kilometers this is the one that I was grabbing this is the one that I was plugging on charge at night so I knew it would be charged the following day for the for the big rides or to take on holiday with me to go to the shops now I'm not taking anything away from the N3 that is probably, or definitely is, my second all-time favorite board. But there's just something special about this one. The power and ooh, the power in the ESC, the responsiveness of the remote control, that suspension, the channel trucks, it's just the range. It is just, for me, it's just, it is my Goldilocks board and it's absolutely perfect. But the big one for me, the really, it really is the big kicker is it is so easy to pick up and chuck in the car. It's easy to live with. It's easy to grab the handle, walk into shops, drop it down. You really can abuse this board and it just keeps on giving. <sighs> That's it. I hope, really hope you enjoyed it. Uh, I hope we've kept it under 15 minutes. Have I? Where's the timer? Down here somewhere? Have I kept it under 15 minutes? Any questions, comments, chuck them down below. If you've got an NYXZ3, tell me your experiences. I always like to hear uh, what you guys and girls are experiencing in the real world. I'm going to keep riding this. I'm going to do a thousand kilometer update in maybe three, four months. I'm going to be going to more group rides in Brisbane. So if you're in Brisbane, expect to see me there. If there's any boards you want me to bring, message me. I'll be bringing either this or the N3. Uh, yeah, that's it. Don't forget, hit the subscribe button. We have some really cool boards coming. I hinted at the cloud wheel video. We have a really, really awesome board. It's arriving tomorrow. It's supposed to arrive last week. It's arriving tomorrow and I... Uh, to say I'm excited to get my hands on this one is an understatement and you'll understand why when I get it. I'm just waiting for approval from the company to be able to do a live stream when it arrives and I'll do like a live stream unboxing but I know they're going to do some teasers and I'll be able to start posting about it from about July 16th. I'll tell you right now, it's not this. It's not in this league but it's a really, really cool board and it's going to shake up the Eastgate uh, industry environment ecosystem for that $1,500 board price range. 
All right, that's it. Thank you so much for watching. Don't forget, as always, skate safe, wear a helmet, and we'll see you on the next video. Yo! You need to go and learn how to skate better. I am a average skater at best, and I can throw this thing around almost better than a double kingpin. And then when you want to, it straightens up. <laughs> and it is a rocket. <laughs>